Hello everybody. This YouTube session is especially for those who are waiting for their state nominations. So at this point of time, Victoria is the only state that is conducting regular invitation rounds. However, these invitation rounds appear to be more focused on onshore migrants and very, very little uh, offshore invitations. In fact, uh, there is a huge scarcity of invitations from Victoria for applicants who are outside Australia. Now, the other state people usually do look upon is the state of NSW. It is supposed to be the largest state in terms of giving the maximum number of uh, nomination invitations, be it for subclass 190 or subclass 491. Uh, in the year 22-23, probably NSW was the state that has given the largest number of invitations ever. And primarily, the reason for that is that firstly, they had a very uh, expanded occupation list for the year 22-23 and they had opened up the direct applications uh, pathway. Therefore, applicants did not have to wait for a pre-invite in order to lodge their application for a nomination. If their occupation was listed on NSW's list and they met the criteria, which was very, very basic, 65 points, expands in each section, they could apply for a nomination. So a lot of candidates have benefited from this uh, generous giveaway of nominations in the year 22-23. Now, since uh, they have not opened the direct application pathway for offshore applicants so far, we see uh, a lesser number of nominations, far lesser, coming in from NSW. South Australia is another state which uh, usually gives out a lot of nominations to offshore applicants. But this year, owing to the DHA issuing a limited initial quota to South Australia, they had to prune down their occupation list a lot of occupations that would usually be uh, invited for a nomination or be nominated by the state of South Australia invariably every year were not even listed on South Australia's occupation list for the year 23-24. However, that does not mean that uh, the state of South Australia or the state of NSW or any other state for that matter do not need offshore skills migrants. In fact, when the states uh, received a very limited quota uh, from the DHA, they did express their huge disappointment at the small numbers allocated to them and did state that we look forward to further quota being released. Now, basically what is really happening here is that uh, the invitations in comparison to the last year are very, very dry, so to say. And they are dry uh, not because Australia has uh, reduced uh, intake uh, for migrants, but because the DHA probably is already uh, undergoing a change in their migration policy uh, specifically with respect to students and temporary workers it's not with relation to 491 190 applicants however in the process the 491 and 190 applications also are hit since the month of march april may and june these months are usually very busy in terms of nominations uh, so far, we have not seen any activity. However, that definitely does not imply that things are going to be as dry as they are so far. No, we do expect the nominations to pick pace. In fact, uh, I think that uh, this so-called silence around the nominations uh, probably is indicative of a huge shakeup which uh, the DHA could be announcing any time and 
the states obviously are looking at the DHA uh, with a lot of hope to get more quota for the nomination so that applicants whose EYs are in the skill select pool could be sent out the invitations ASAP. Now, while you wait for the pre-invites to come through or for direct uh, application pathways to open, what should you be doing? Uh, so I would say there are two or three things you do need to do. First of all, please remove unnecessary EOIs that you may have floated within the skill select system. Unclutter the system, declutter the system. Uh, a lot of applicants uh, I have seen have floated their EOIs in states that do not even have their occupation listed. So if uh, you think probably it is a good strategy to put up an invitation, sorry, put up an EOI in every state and probably by stroke of luck, you may be invited. That is not how it happens. You are just sending uh, in too many duplicate EOIs and actually reducing your chances of being invited for a nomination. The other thing you could do is increase your points. Now, I do understand that uh, I have been telling you in all my videos that higher points is not a guarantee for a nomination. So why am I telling you to increase your point? Well, this is just a recommendation uh, in case you think it is uh, viable for you to increase your point by fetching five points for partners English um, if he or she uh, clears uh, or let's say uh, achieves a competent score or if you can uh, get some additional points for your work experience or whatever. If it's doable for you, do that. Now, having said that, I'd also like to say that Australia, unlike Canada, that focuses on high scoring applications. The way in Canada, so for example, Canada basically focuses on highest scoring applications. So whoever's scoring, getting the maximum score would be picked up and those with the lowest score will be left behind to be considered in the next invitation round. That is not how Australia functions. Australia has been sending out subclass 190 invitations to applicants with just 65 points and six each and maybe leaving out an applicant with 100 points so it entirely depends from one profile to another also in australia your uh, high points can be of benefit in a state where a state makes available nominations for high score applications for example nsw now though nsw has indicated that it has five industries on its priority list uh, however the invitations for offshore applicants sent out by nsw so far were for occupations that were not even listed within those or did not fall within those five industries for example marketing specialists have been given out invitations so far and those with high points, 80 points and above had been given invitations. So the only advantage you have with having a high point score is that states that are targeting applicants with high scores, in addition to those applicants whose occupation is listed on their priority list, applicants could have a chance of availing such opportunities. Now, the last question I would like to take, uh, take up with you is a lot of you feel, why am I not getting a nomination? Why am I left out? So uh, please understand it is not just you. Even a person with 100 or 105 points is waiting for a nomination at this point of time. Also, this delay in the nomination is not just limited to the nomination process, but to all three processes. So since there are still three steps involved in a skilled migrant visa, uh, that is subclass 190 and subclass 491, skills assessment, state nomination and visa processing. Skills assessments are taking very long unless you go for a priority process. Uh, we have seen some in, uh, skills assessments even taking as long as eight to nine months. 
the nominations of course are taking longer than expected and the visa processing time is also long in fact uh, towards the end of last year we had seen a lot of visas for priority sectors coming through in about 3 to 6 months but as of now the visas are taking time so overall there is a delay there is a, a general delay in all the processes and this probably uh, leads me to think that there is a possible shake up coming up which is why things are in a stand still mode as of now and we probably do have a lot of great things to look forward to very soon with that note i'd like to end this video if you have any queries please feel free to write into us on enquiries at canwings.com or give us a call on 7849878498 we'll be happy to help until next time bye bye